Hello and welcome. This is Jennifer McGuire. I'm so glad you're here. Today I am sharing with you how I create my color labels for my ink pads and my ink swatches. Taking time to do the labeling and swatching has been very helpful to me. I can find the colors of ink that I need faster. I can create color combos easier and I just use my inks better. Now I know it's not for everyone, but I thought I'd share this process in case you were interested in seeing how I do it. Also, this is something that I like to do when I want to be creative, but I'm not feeling creative. It allows me to get a little inky, have some basic stamping, and it usually gets me back on that creative train. I will be demonstrating creating the color labels for the side of my ink pads and my ink swatches using the newest colors of ink pads from Pink Fresh Studios. I'm telling you, they're gorgeous. Before we start, I did want to mention that I had rotator cuff surgery about a week ago. It'll be a while before I'm out of this giant sling that you see here, but I thought I would try today to use my left hand for creating these swatches. I didn't do a perfect job with my labeling, but that's okay. I really needed to get into my craft room. Now I do have videos still coming, don't worry, and I will start going live soon with some friends I encourage you to uh, check my blog where I'll share info about when those lives will happen. Okay, let's get started. I have my Misty stamping tool and in it I have placed a waffle flower grip mat. That'll hold my little ink swatch in place as I stamp on it. I have an ink swatch that I created using my free ink swatch downloads over on my blog. I'll put a link to those below. I have them for all the different ink lines out there. I also chose an H and I stamp from Pink Fresh Studio. This is an older discontinued stamp set. I just like to choose a solid stamp from that company when I create the ink swatches. So I chose these solid letters from Pink Fresh Studio since I'm doing Pink Fresh Studio inks. And now I can just stamp that image in the color that the ink swatch says and go through all of my inks. I'll show you all of the inks and how I organize my ink swatches later in this video. And again, I have free ink swatch downloads on my website. All you have to do is download them, print them, and then follow the instructions to cut them into these small squares. Now I could continue to make all of my ink swatches like this. However, I prefer to make my color labels for the side of my ink pad at the same time as doing the ink swatches. So let me show you how I add that into the process. Now here is a look at what those color swatches look like on the side of the ink pad. I do this for all the different companies I have. Now some companies offer little color coded stickers for the side, you could definitely use that. But doing this method gives a very true color on the side of your ink pad. So if you have them on a shelf or you know, kind of standing up in a drawer, you can easily see the true color of what you would get by stamping. I recently changed how I create these color labels for the side of the ink pads. I used to use little strips of cardstock and stick them on the side, but I found it so much easier to use these mailing labels. There are a lot on the sheet and a lot in the package, more than you could ever use for all of your inks. I will demonstrate how I make these, very easy to do. You could, again, just cut thin strips of cardstock and stamp on those and just glue them on the side. But this I found really has worked better and it's just much easier. Now the process I go through is I take one of those sheets of labels and I cut it in half. So I'm cutting at five and a half inches. I set one of the halves aside and then I start cu cutting quarter inch slices from these label sheets. So I am taking these half inch tall labels and I'm cutting them in half so they're only a quarter of an inch tall. That way they will fit nicely on the side of my ink pad. Now I've tried many different ways of doing this and I found this to be the easiest. You'll see it's very easy when we go to stamp it. So this is again, cutting quarter inch strips. On this Tim Holtz trimmer, you can see a quarter inch is just a grid line on the background. So I just move the, pa the label sheet over one grid line and cut, then move another grid line and cut. This actually goes pretty quickly and you can hold two halves of a label sheet together and cut multiple strips at once, but I'm trying to take it easy because I can only use my hand from like my elbow down. So um, I'm just trying to go as easy as I can here. All right, so after I've cut a bunch of those strips, now let's start making our little labels for the ink pad at the same time as we make the ink swatches that I showed you before. 
I like to stamp on my white ink labels using a solid stamp. This is an older Pink Fresh Studio Cling Solid Stripe stamp set. I think it's discontinued, but I will link below to another stamp set. It's a clear stamp set that has large solid stripes. That's what I normally use to stamp my uh, ink labels. But honestly, it's in a box in the other room and I can't get it down with my arm and my husband went out for a run. So I'm making do with this. But any kind of solid image that would stamp over your label would work. Now this strip of labels that we just cut to be quarter inch wide, that actually has four labels going across. I'm only using two, but I'm stamping as much as I can over this whole strip and I'll just peel off two labels from it. So I will have two labels stamped, one for one end of the ink pad and one for the other end. There are a million ways you could do this. This is just what works for me. You could also take your ink pad and just swipe it on the label, but I like to get the true color that you get from stamping instead of going direct to paper and swiping. Okay, so let's do our stamping. I put my ink swatch in the corner. I'm putting my white label strip right there in my stamping tool, right along one of the grid lines there. I know if I put it there every time, it'll stamp just fine. I'm inking up the cling stamp stripes and the high, and I'll stamp them both at once. That way I create my ink swatch and the labels for the side of my ink pads at the same time. Okay, now watch this beautiful color. This is one of my new favorites from Pink Fresh. It's called Begonia. It is such a beautiful kind of dusty peach color. I just love it. So we have our ink swatch and we have our label here. And now we can move on to the next color. So I just go through and do this for a bunch of different inks. Then I go and put everything together at the end. You get into a rhythm and it really doesn't take that long. And by the way, the reason I used two of these stripe stamps is because it's a shorter stripe. If you uh, check out the stripe clear stamp set that I have below, it has longer stripes and that would stamp like the whole label strip pretty much at once. So really just make use of what you have. If you don't have a stripe like this, you could stamp even just like a large circle over it or again, go direct to paper. So this is how I create the little color label to go on the side of my ink pad. But I also like to put a clear label over it to protect that color label. And it has the name of the ink so I can see the name of the ink from the side. So I use a label maker for this. I have used a label maker for many years in my craft room. I've shown it many times in videos. It's one of my most used craft tools. This is a newer model than what I've used in past videos just because that older one I don't think is available anymore, but they all really work the same way. And the settings I'm gonna show you will work with all the different Brother P-Touch models. This particular label maker is very affordable. However, I will link below to two other options. There's one that costs a bit more, but you can hook it up to your computer so you can type your labels that way. The third option is the most expensive one. It doesn't have a keyboard, but you hook it up to your computer and there are lots of ways you can customize your label. Honestly, that's what I use for creating all the labels for my stamps and such. But this one that you see on the screen here that I'm demonstrating with is the one that I use in my craft room when I'm creating my ink labels. There are just a lot of options out there. And honestly, this one that is the most affordable really can do everything you need. Now, as far as the tape or the labels that go in this, I am using the nine millimeter clear with black printing today. Now, when I label my stamps, my stamp pockets, I use a wider one. It's 12 millimeters wide, but this nine millimeter fits perfectly along the edge of an ink pad. So that's why I'm using this option. I will link below to these labels. They are actually much more affordable than some of the brand name ones out there. So I will link to those below. This is clear and we can put this over our color labels we just created. It'll protect the color label and allow us to add the name. One thing to know about label makers like this is that the auto setting for it causes a lot of wasted label on the left and the right of whatever you print. So I like to change the settings so that you can extend how much you get out of one of these little cassette of tape. Now I've shown this in videos before. I thought I'd show it again here. I'm going to show you how to do chain printing. I find this to be the most effective. So you go into your label maker and you press the label button. 
Then there are arrows, so you can toggle through the different options under label. So you can use the arrows, you can see here, label length is one option, margin, tab length, so on. You're gonna push the arrow until you see margin. That's what we're looking for here. Once you find the word margin, press OK. That will take you into the, all the different options for margin. You're gonna use that arrow to toggle through until you see chain. Now the other ones work great, but chain print is what I just find always works the best. So I change it to chain print and I hit OK once again. And it'll tell you it's accepted those settings and you shouldn't have to change this again unless something happens and your uh, machine resets like the battery runs out. Next, I need to change the size of the words that we're putting on the side of our label. I don't want big letters here. I want small letters because it's going on the side of an ink pad. So to do this, I will choose the button font and then we can toggle through using the little arrows and switch to some different options. You can change the font used here, the size, you can change the width, the style, all that. You're gonna just keep pressing the arrow until you get to size. Once you reach size, press OK. Now this will give you different size options. Normally I go with whatever it automatically does, but here I want to switch to medium. Medium will give you a nice size for the side of your ink pad. If you didn't change the setting to medium, it would print really big letters. Okay, so now we need to create the labels for the side of our ink pads. I want this clear label to wrap around the corners of my ink pad a bit so that that little color label that's underneath it will be protected. So I want actually extra space around our ink names. So I am hitting the space button like 15 times. I only do this when I'm creating labels for the side of ink pads. You'll see why in a moment. So I hit this space bar about 15 times. Then I'm gonna do PF for Pink Fresh Studio. It just makes it easier for me to quickly grab whatever I'm looking for. So I'll do PF and then a space and then whatever the ink color name is. Once I've typed that name in, I will hit print. So that's up there on the top right corner. I'll hit print and it'll say how many copies. I need two because I plan to put a label on both ends of my ink pad. You could just do one if you want. So I press two and then okay, and it'll start printing it out the back. Because I did that chain print setting, this will come out as one continuous piece and I can cut it apart myself. By the way, I'm not pulling it there. It's coming out on its own. Once it's done printing, it'll say feed okay, question mark. That means, are you done? I'm not done, so I'll hit escape and I can make another one. It's easy from here. All I have to do is backspace to erase the coral reef color name and I can add in whatever the next color is that I want to do. So I'll type in cherry blossom here, and then once again, we'll hit print. It wants to know how many copies, so I'll press two and then okay. And it'll print those out the back. And all of these labels will be connected because we use that chain print setting. By using that setting, we use less wasted tape. Okay, so let's say I'm done now. I've done all the colors that I want to do. I'll go back to the front of the machine here and it'll say feed okay. This time I'll say okay. And it spits out a little more tape so that you can use the cut button up there on the top right corner and cut off all of that label tape. Now here is the thing. Notice there's big spaces between my color names. That's because I added all those spaces in there at first because I need that extra space here. If you're doing extra labeling, just don't put those spaces in at the beginning and all of your labels will be close together and you can cut them apart easy with no wasted tape. By the way, there are a million ways you can use these label makers. This is just what I found over the years works best and is most effective. Okay, now I can just cut between each of these color names. Remember there are two labels for each ink color, so I can have a label on each side of my ink pad. Some people like to only label one side. I totally get it. I prefer to do the two. Now we can start putting these together. I will peel off one of my color labels from our label strip and add it to one end of the ink pad and then do the same thing on the other end. Now, I'm not really centering these up really well because I'm trying to do this with limited mobility, but I think you get the idea. Again, you could use cardstock strips here instead of a label, but notice how easy it is to just stick it in place. Now we can add the clear label with the name on top. Remember, we have that extra label on the left and the right of the name. That's so that it can really wrap around the corners of the side of that ink pad and really stay in place. I don't want this to come off ever. 
Also, this clear label, which really fits right to the height of that ink pad base, it protects that color label underneath. So it won't get ruined if water touches it or other inks. I tried doing color labels that I just stuck on the side without something over it, and I found they just wore out over time. This kind of protects it. So I put one label on one end, and now we'll put it on the other end. And again, once you get into a rhythm, this really doesn't take long. Totally understand that this process isn't for everyone. Some people don't need to do this. Some people would prefer to use like a company sticker. Totally get that. But if you're like me and are looking for a way to quickly identify what a color ink pad truly stamps, this is a great option. Also, if you're ever losing your mojo, this is something that helps you kind of kickstart it and make you want to create again. Next, let's go over these Pink Fresh Studio dye inks that I'm showing you today. And then I'll show you how I put my ink swatches together, the ink swatches we made earlier in this video. Now, Pink Fresh Studio has had inks out for a while. You've seen me use them in many of my videos. They have recently just come out with 24 new colors. I'll show you them soon and a new white pigment ink pad. So in all, between this collection and their older collection, they have 72 colors plus a black ink pad and the white one, so 74 in total. And you'll see how they really strategically came up with these new colors to fill in gaps of what they had in their old collection. Now these are firm ink pads, firm felt ink pads, like a traditional dye ink. That's what I tend to reach for the most. These inks dry right away, but absorb slowly into the paper, smooth out and soften, giving you a nice solid result. I really like these inks, especially for stenciling. Now in the Pink Fresh collection, they have sets of four inks. So these are the newer ones I'm showing you here. You can see there are four inks in one little collection. There's a light, medium, dark, and extra dark. So they all work together well. These are the full size ink pads. They also have the ink cubes available in these little four packs, and they have reinkers. Again, these are dye inks. They stamp wonderfully, they blend beautifully, and the color collection I feel, as I mentioned, looks kind of like candy. You have this kind of vibrant color collection of light, medium, dark, and extra dark inks. Now I use a lot of different inks in my videos. I think there are a lot of great ink options out there. Pink Fresh Studio is definitely one of the ones I reach for the most because of the color selection. But feel free to mix and match different brands together. Use what you have and look for any gaps that you may have and see how you can fill them. Their new white ink is the only pigment ink in their collection. The cap here says dye ink, but that was an error. If you ordered this, it would definitely say pigment ink. But this is one that you can stamp on darker colors of cardstock and do many great techniques with. All right, now let's look at the ink swatches that I created for all of the Pink Fresh, new and old. This is how I organize my ink swatches, and I have them for all of the different companies. They are coin protectors. This is where you store coins if you collected them. They work great with the free ink swatch downloads that I have available on my website for all of the different inks out there. I'm showing you here today a mix of the old and new, the entire Pink Fresh Studio ink collection. And just looking at it here, you can see how it's such a happy color collection of vibrant colors. Now in my ink swatches here, the color collections go along in rows. So along the top there is one color family. You can buy the ink pads individually, but the cubes come in the sets of four. Now looking at this part of the rainbow, the top, middle, and bottom rows are older colors, and then the second and fourth rows between are the newer ones that kind of came in to fill in the gaps. And look at that beautiful start to the rainbow. Okay, let's take a closer look. That top row there is an older collection. If you're looking for a perfect pink, that bubble gum, the sparkling rows are two that I reach for often. Now the second row are four of the newer ink colors, Cherry Blossom, Peony, Begonia, and Mulberry Blush. These are very unique colors. That Begonia and the Mulberry Blush are very unique. Kind of a dusty peach color, uh, like a more muted peach. Absolutely beautiful, and you will see me use these in videos very soon because I gotta get back to ink blending as soon as possible. All right, now the third row of colors are ones that have been out for a while, but if you watch my videos, you have seen that Coral Reef and Passion Fruit used many times. 
Now the color row above it, the newer colors are more of a muted version of these brighter kind of more red colors. The fourth row has a new set of four colors. We have the Sunkissed Mimosa, Mango Sorbet, and Fruit Punch. And this is such a happy kind of peachish orange color. It is truly like a fruit punch color. The mimosa, the sorbet, those are two that you'll see me use a lot because it just adds like such a happy pop of orange to whatever you're creating. Below that we have more of a true orange, the peach fuzz, apricot, clementine, and persimmon. Now that clementine is what I would call kind of like a pumpkin orange. So you can see how the row above it is a bit brighter. I really am impressed at how Pinkfresh Studio came out with these new colors to kind of fill in the gaps from their original collection. And look at how every color is represented there. Okay, so let's flip this over. Here we have our yellows and our greens. Up at the top, you have an older set of four inks, the Lemon Whip, Sunshine, Sweet Mustard, and Marigold. Anytime I need a light yellow, I reach for that Lemon Whip. Now this is what I would kind of call a true yellow color. But with this new collection, they added the four inks in the second row. That's the Lemoncello, Citron, Bay Leaf, and Spanish Moss. This set of four inks fills in that giant gap that I feel so often in a rainbow between a yellow and a green. I'm always looking for that yellowish green that will fill in the gap, and you really can find that with the Citron or the Bay Leaf. All right, now for a true green collection, I use the Fresh Pear, Key Lime, and Grassy Knoll a lot. Those are what I consider to be true kind of Kelly greens. That's an older set of four inks and you'll still still see me reach for those often because they are so true green, especially that grassy knoll. Now the fourth row there is a newer collection. We have sage, eucalyptus, spruce tips, and lush flores for sorry lush forest. These are more of a gray or kind of bluish grayish green. Um, this would be great for like a fall card or just a different type of green for a holiday card. The eucalyptus is beautiful. Then the bottom row is an older set of four inks, the Mint Meadow, Emerald Green, or I'm sorry, Emerald City and Evergreen. These are more of your bluish greens, kind of your mint and your darker mint colors. Okay, so you can see there we have lots of green options, which I'm thankful for because as someone who creates a lot of um, foliage cards with flowers and such, having greens is always good. That top, middle, and bottom row are older colors. Then the second and fourth row are newer colors. Let's move on to turquoise blues and some purples. Here, most of them are older colors. Only the second and the last row are newer colors. Now let's look at these closer. On the top, we have the Ocean Breeze, Aquamarine, Mermaid Cove, and Teal Pond, which are really your kind of aqua or um, kind of greenish turquoise colors. Below that, you have more of a true turquoise, which are the newer four colors, Waterfall, Turquoise, Paradise, and Atlantis. Now these are absolutely beautiful, more of a blue turquoise, I just want to jump in that little ocean of colors. I know I get excited about ink colors, but listen, I've been sitting in a recliner healing the shoulder for a while. I'm really excited about new ink colors to play with. Okay, then that third row are some of the older ink colors, the sky blue, summer shower, seaside, and storm. That seaside is such a great bright blue, like middle of the road bright blue. And then below that are some of the other older blues, the Slumber, Blue Jay, Sapphire, and Stargazer. I use the Blue Jay and Sapphire a lot often. Those are brighter, darker blues. So you can see there are a lot of great options between the teals, the turquoise, the blues, and into the purples. No one needs every color of ink. Please know that. But I'm hoping that by giving you a closer look, you could maybe pick out the favorite colors you have or ones that you maybe have been looking for. All right, along the bottom here, we have some new purples. Now these are great kind of true purples, maybe leaning more towards the bluish side. That hydrangea is absolutely gorgeous. I was really excited about that collection of purple that was added because the top row here is the purple they used to have, which was definitely more of a pinkish purple. Now don't get me wrong, that older collection of purples I use quite a lot. That candy violet is a great pinkish purple for kind of a magenta feel on your card. 
Then below that, we have the older Misty Coast, Rocky Slope, Metropolis, and Licorice. Now the Licorice color is missing because I use the Licorice ink pad to stamp the Handmade by Jennifer stamp on the back of all of my cards. And that also is in a box in the closet. I just get it down when I need it and I can't reach it. So that's why I can't stamp that ink swatch right now. But do know it's just a darker gray. And these are true grays, which are definitely hard to find. Below that, we also have the older warm buff, dough, gathered twigs, and espresso. And then finally, the detailed black ink. And then there is that white pigment ink. Now, I haven't created a swatch for that yet, but you can see it is a vibrant white pigment ink that is great for lots of techniques. So again, 74 colors in all, 72 of them are like true dye color ink pads, then the black and the white in addition. And these are the ink swatches I made free over on my website. You just put them in coin slot protectors and I keep them in a binder with all of the different companies. That way I can easily pull out different color swatches, make different color combinations and make the best use of the inks that I have. Before we go, I also wanted to mention that Pink Fresh Studio just came out with storage boxes that are super nice for ink cubes. I couldn't show them in the video due to my arm and my husband being out on a run, so I didn't have any help. But these are great because they're zipper pouches. You can see they're a nice pink. There are two different sizes. The zipper opens and there is great storage for your ink cubes. They stay nice and secure in there. And you could actually use these boxes with any brand ink cubes. I will link to these below if you want to get a closer look at them. I'm really hoping this video was helpful to you. Please know that I try to show as many ink swatches in my videos for different ink lines out there. I can't do them all, but I do as many as possible so that you can better see if some of the colors or types of inks work for you. So there are a lot of great options out there. If you want a closer look at what I talked about today, I have it all linked below in my YouTube description. And at the end here, I'll link to a couple other related videos. One of them shows how I create those ink swatches, how I print and cut them. It's an older video, but it still holds true. I've done this process for a while. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again soon and have a great day.